Um, you know, one of the things I'm trying to wrap my head around, you're leaving, but why is it sometimes easy to get up to the bridge? And why is it sometimes hard to get to meet people at the bridge? You know, across culture, across difference in this town. You know, Kathy was saying how diverse that, that, that walk run was for people. Why is it sometimes hard for some people and easy for others to meet at the bridge and be bridge builders? I'll translate. No. <laughs> raise your raise your manas. Manas is mind, your thoughts to the spiritual level. Because your enemy is your mind. And your friend is your mind. If I think he is my enemy, it is the thinking that makes him my enemy. There is no enemy. So there is one sloka where in the Devi, the Gavis, Sarva Mangala Mangali, there are thousand names for her. Shatru Buddhir Vinashaya. Kill the enmity in me which makes somebody as my enemy. If the enmity is gone, he becomes my friend. So are you saying in some way that it's all in us? We're overthinking it. Overthinking. Some people think like, I'm not sure how to he react. You allow two children to be together, they will mix very fast. And the and sometimes it's hard because it's overthinking. Am I doing this right? Am I saying these? You know, like I wrote the book Life Made Simple, in which one of the greatest authors in India wrote a commentary. And during the release, he was the person who released it daily. He was telling, nobody has to make life simple. God made it simple. We make it sophisticated. We make it complicated. Yesterday we were discussing Bhagavad Gita. I said we can be comfortably uncomfortable and uncomfortably comfortable. I'm comfortable right now. We are comfortable because yeah. we are comfortable. Yeah. The seats are comfortable. No, that's but true. there are great places where we have huge, you know how Prime Minister sits or President sits? He will not sit in one feet chair. He will sit in large chair. Because there is a gap always between somebody else. <laughs> they cannot mix with the people, right? So, so we want, you and I, in our heart of hearts, want to find more opportunities for our communities, for the communities of the Hindu community, of the Yudhi community, and the Christian communities, and the Muslim community, Jewish community, to find more opportunities to mix, interact and mix. mix. Do you have three tips of how to make that happen? I come from a village where the academic institution up to 10th grade is owned by my family. I own a school where when I was a small child we had 30% Muslims, 30% Christians, 30% Hindus. But today we have more of different community, I'm not naming. Because people compete, religious competition. <laughs> I think if there is no competition, if you understand everybody is one God and one concept, we may name it different. And mix is the beauty. We don't like a garden with only one flower. We like different flowers, right? We don't want to wear one color. We want multiple colors. It looks so beautiful with the different colors. We don't draw a picture with one color. We mix colors. So, variety things. Learn how to accept differences. Celebrate differences. Celebrate differences. Yeah. That's the same thing I think which we got connected. Yeah. If and I'm saying that. Yeah. And in April and in April there's a congregation wide program that we're doing on on differences and intercultural competency. So how we can not move over difference so quickly and move to sameness. Because there is a lot of this within Hinduism, we are all one, we are all, you know, connected. But that doesn't erase difference, right? The differences are still there, and that's important, yeah. right? And I think that that's a really hard thing in interfaith work is either just run towards, you know, a mathematical term, lowest common denominator, and it's like stay there, you know, or live in a more complex thing where there's going to be disagreement, there's going to be tension, um, but there can still be deep respect and celebration of one another. Is that right? 
Who asked at three points? Oh, sorry, got my wife. So is that one? The first point was during lunch you enjoyed because there are variety of Good. items, right? Yeah, I'm so ready. Second one? Yeah. Remember the first one. Read the first one. Okay. Third one? Yeah. Remember the second one. Oh no. <laughs> I don't even remember what was for lunch. It was good. Is it? Oh, good. Good. So, I am just really hoping that during the food and drink and con coffee and conversation after the service, people will stick around, talk to someone new that you might not have talked to before, and allow this to not be something that's too complicated, right? Find ways to say, hey, Shankar, we haven't had lunch in a while. Or, I've never met you before. Let's get lunch. It's like, what? I don't even know you. It's like, why? Why? Do, let's not overcomplicate things. Everyone loves lunch. Um, so. You're paying, right? Oh, I'm paying, yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's the trick. But That's we the always, action. but we always reflect. Shankaracharya kept to say, Manam Darpana Samanam. Manas mind, your thinking is like a mirror. I will reflect based on the way you react to it. We will try. If it doesn't work, ignore. Right. And it's like, it's a mirror and a mirror and a mirror and a mirror. And it's like this kind of thing where it keeps going back. And so who starts, who changes the pattern, right? Who changes the one to move towards compassion, towards simplicity, towards kindness, you know? And that's, that requires all of us to take risks. It requires a good heart. A good heart? Good. Well, and you cannot have good head and good heart together. Two H is impossible. It's not mine. Nelson Mandela said. That's not what they said. Right. That's not coming. So we're going to keep practicing moving to our hearts. We're going to uh, remember that we have this one world that we celebrate together. Our world is one world. And we're going to sing our closing hymn today. And um, deep gratitude for you, Dr. TPS, and to, this, to these six.